Hi friends, we talked about the differential and various types of the differentials. Now in this video, I am going to talk about the rear wheel drive axles and also the planetary reduction system in the rear wheel drive axle. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about the front wheel drive axles that the axles with constant velocity joints how the axles are flexible with the installation of the constant velocity joints and how the constant velocity joints works we discussed in this video we will talk about the rear axles the vehicles driven with the rear wheel drive the rear axles of the vehicle looks like this this is the differential these are the orange color one the axles the job of the axle is to transmit the torque or rotation force from the differential to the wheels, drive wheels. And these axles are rigid and made with induction hardened steel. Why the induction hardening? It means the induction hardening gives the more fatigue resistance and wear resistance. Means this axle has to take the load of the entire vehicle and also should be able to withstand for the shocks or bumps being generated during the driving. Same time the splines of the shocks should be able to withstand for the wear being generated during the operation. Again this is how we can see how the axles looks like this. The inner end is Spline to the sun gear and the outer end is free, connected to the wheel. You can see different types of the outer ends. This is tapper nose where the wheel is pressed and you can also see some axles with the splines where the wheel is mounted on the splines and you can see some axles with the flange here which are bolted to the wheel. This is the picture of the differential and final drive housing the differential inside their axles these are the wheels these are the brakes etc this is the photograph of one type of the axle you can see this the inner the splines where which comes and sits inside these splines this is the flange which is fitted to the wheels you can see normally two types of the rear axles in the vehicles that is semi floating and fully floating type you can also see the third variety which is called the three quarter floating type of the axle but in very very uh, few vehicles we can see such mechanism now let us discuss about the semi floating and fully floating axles this is the semi floating axle if you see this construction this gray shaft is the axle shaft this is the outer end of the axle shaft with tapper nose and key here and this is the inner end of the shaft as discussed the inner end sits inside the sun gear or the side gear the outer end is fitted with the wheel here this is the tapper nose the wheel is pressed here this is actually hub then hub is the wheel is bolted here and when you observe why it is called the semi floating axle at one end it is it can freely move inside the sun gear because the inner end of the shaft is inserted in the splines of the sun gear whereas the other end is not free here the other end is loaded by the vehicle why it is loaded this axle is inside the housing but in between the axle and the housing there is a bearing some axles have the tapper roller bearing and some axles you can see the ball bearing also like this. This is the ball bearing. Load of the load of the vehicle which is distributed to this particular side is shared by both axle and as well as the housing. That's why it is called as the semi-floating axle. One end it is free, one end it is loaded. In addition to this bearings here, you can also see the oil seals. This black one is the oil seal. The oil seal is provided here to prevent the leakage of the lubricant available to 
lubricate this bearing. The lubricant may be oil or the grease. This is how a semi floating axle looks like this. This is the free end, that is the inner side of the axle, and this is the outer end. This is the flange fitted to the wheel. This is the tapper roller bearing. This one. You can see this here. This is how the fitment looks. The wheel, the hub is here, this is the axle shaft with the bearing surface, bearing seating area. Inside there is a bearing you can see. This is the axle. Whatever load is acting on this housing is transmitted to the axle shaft also. The inner end of this axle shaft is uh, subjected to the rotational vibrations of the differential. Semi floating axle shafts take the stresses caused by the turning, skidding, or wobbling of the wheels because. It is supported to the axle housing through the bearings. Now, let us talk about the fully floating axles. See the difference between the semi floating axle and fully floating axle. If this is the axle, this yellow one is the housing. This is the inner end of the axle which is seated inside the sun gear or the side gear. This end is free inside the axle housing. There is no any bearing in between the housing and axle as we have seen in case of semi floating axle. Here this is the bearing. Here you can't see the axle is free here. And the outer end of the axle is fitted to the wheel through the flange or direct fitment. Which means this flange is freely moving this side and that side without taking any kind of load directly through the housing. That's why it is called as the fully floating axle. In case of fully floating axle, there will be two tapper roller bearings inner and outer bearings. Both the bearings are fitted in the axle housing and a seal is provided to protect the lubricant from the leakage. The main job of this fully floating is actually to absorb all the stresses developed due to the rotation, due to the rotation from the differential. And this kind of fully floating axles can be seen mainly in the medium and higher capacity missions and in all mining and construction missions. This is how the fully floating mechanism looks. This is the axle you can see in the, in the previous picture you can see the bearing here where there is no any bearing here. Okay. This axle can be after taking out these bolts it can be freely taken out. Now, let us discuss about the speed reduction mechanism in the final drive. Now, let us talk about the speed reduction in the final drive. Okay. Generally, speed reduction or torque increase takes place in the differential because because the number of teeth on the bevel pinion will be much lesser than the number of teeth on the crown wheel. Because of the difference in teeth, the speed reduction or the torque increase takes place in the differential itself. That speed reduction in the differential alone is enough for the light duty vehicles and passenger cars. But when it comes to the heavy duty vehicles like trucks, buses, loaders and other missions, we need to, the vehicle has to produce more and more torque rather than the speed. The light commercial vehicles and passenger cars have to travel at more speed, whereas these missions, industrial missions or mining missions or construction missions or heavy duty goods trucks, they need to produce the more torque than the speed. That's why an additional speed reduction mechanism is installed 
at the outer end of the axial shaft. Generally, in this kind of system, only fully floating axles are used. One of such speed reduction mechanism is the planetary reduction. We discussed about the planetary reduction in the previous videos, very, very detailed. Here it's very simple. This is the sun gear which is attached to the axle outer end. The axle shaft outer end splines are inserted in this internal teeth. This is the sun gear which is considered as an input device. This is the ring gear which is held stationary on the housing. You can see this is the housing here and whereas this is the ring gear, this grey one. You can see this, this is the housing, housing splines. So this ring gear is attached to the splines of the housing. You know very well housing is a stationary one which is which will not move. So ring is held stationary with the help of this splines. So input device, then the ring is held stationary and then this is the output device. As per the planetary gas formula, when we give the input drive to the sun gear, ring is held the output device will be uh, the output device is the planetary case in such case the output speed will be less than the input speed but the direction of rotation is same output speed will be less than the input speed that is the increase in the torque and the direction of rotation will be same This is how. This is the output, this is the input speed of the sun gear. The planetary, the ring is held here. If you see this from input to the held component, the ring gear, this vector diagram shows us this is the output speed, which is less than the input speed. For example, a sun gear is having 10 teeth and all the planetary gears have together three wheels have 30 teeth then the ratio will be the number of teeth on the output divided by the number of teeth in the input which comes here 90 by 30 which is 3 is to 1. This is how the shaft is here. Axial shaft connected to the sun gear. The axial shaft is being taken out and these are the planetary gears. Normally vehicles will have three planetary gears, four planetary gears or whatever, maybe five planetary gears depending on the design. And all the planetary gears are connected to the single case. You can see this here. This planetary system is having two sets of planetary reduction gear. This is the one inside and again here one more. So, the uh, one more ring gear is mounted over this and bolted to this. Means two times the speed reduction or torque increase is taking place here. The first reduction is in this one. Again, the output, this planetary case output will become the input here attached to a sun gear. Then this will become the input here. Again, the ring over this one is held stationary, this case planetary will become the output. Uh, this kind of planetary reduction is used where the vehicles need high torque to carry the load that is the heavy duty trucks, highway trucks, construction machines, dumpers, loaders etc. Whereas the double reduction planetary system is used in the machines like the bulldozers, the machines which needs to push more load means they have they need more torque to push the load rather than running on speed. 
and this kind of system can be is used in the even excavators also missions who run at 2 kilometers per hour speed 3 kilometers per hour speed just uh, let us uh, briefly have about the i mean speed reduction ratio it is an example this is the differential pinion and crown wheel let us imagine don't count on the number of teeth on the figure let's imagine number of teeth on the pinion is 10 whereas the number of teeth on the crown wheel is 30. here the speed reduction ratio is output divided by input 30 divided by 10 that is 3 is to 1 and take the same thing in case of the pantry gear number of teeth on the input device that is sun gear is 10 the number of teeth together on the three planetary wheels is 30 here speed reduction will be again output number of teeth on the output divided by number of teeth in the input again it is 3 is to 1 when you calculate the total reduction here the ratio of the first reduction in the differential and the ratio of the second reduction in the planetary system this is 3 is to 1 multiplied by 3 is to 1 which comes 9 is to 1 which means for every 9 revolutions of the propeller shaft or the differential pinion the wheels rotates one revolution means otherwise for every one revolution of the wheel propeller shaft has to turn nine times generally light commercial vehicles or automobile i mean passengers vehicles will be having the speed reduction ratio at final drive in the range of five is to one or six is to one and the entire reduction will be only in the differential whereas in case of the trucks and all the reduction speed reduction ratio is 15 is to 1 or 16 is to 1 or even 30 40 is to 1 also please go through this notes in case you have any doubts or queries you can always contact